Hey guys, welcome back to Open Motion, and this is a quick video on overshoots. I just wanted to sh share some little tips that I've, uh, well not tips, but just workflows that I've been going through. And I just thought this one might be useful to you guys because, uh, you know, overshoots are used quite a lot in animation, you know, where you're overshooting the hand and then you're settling, you know, there's a, there's kind of this pushed pose before it comes down or just normally you might use an overshoot to keep a pose holding because it it looks alive and then it goes into the next pose right so you're holding it and you're overshooting certain parts of the body and this works well and it's quite essential in 3d because when you just like in the previous video when you stop to a pose and that's it it almost feels doesn't feel right in cg right so what what you do is you add some secondary or some overshoots or something to make the character thinking and looking right. So I'll give you a quick example that I've used in one of my animations. So let's dive straight in and talk about this. So for example, this animation here I've got. So the character jumps over and hits the pose there. But because I want this pose, I want to work and milk this pose, I basically just move it move it a bit more overshoot a bit more and the only thing i really did here was i selected the hips and if you go to if i go to the my z z axis if you look at the graph editor here all i've done is i've overshot literally just moved this pose from like forward a bit like that that's all i did and that's created the overshoot just in the hips axis because that's going to be affecting the whole character so it's literally it could just be literally one little control like that are you moving and then there's a little bit of movement in the head as well you can see so that's in this in the simplest form that's what an overshoot is and what you could use it for for holding poses like this so you so depending on what you want to do i wanted him here to wind up and have a bit of energy before he pushes so that's why there's a bit of an overshoot like that if you look here there so it holds it quite well there it holds it well enough to how i want it so if i if i just squeeze this timeline so we get there just push this back so if we check that out so you can see it holds there hold so there's, there's the overshoot from there, from here to one, two, three, four, five, six. So about six frames there. All of that is the overshoot. And then obviously with the hand, I've got the another thing happening there, which is adding a bit of breaking up the motions. And that's all, it's literally all one pose this and a little of the foot's going up a little bit so you add those little details as and when you think you feel it will add to the character not just moving it because you are but adding it so there's some kind of character to it or a reason to it here i just wanted to wind up so then i wanted the energy to come up from the hips and then go bam straight into this pose and then obviously here there's an overshoot as well in the hips going up holding that so you hit the pose and a little bit of a holding pose and overshoot as well and then going back into his pose so that's a simple simplest form of using the over, overshoot another example i'll give you quickly is so you've got a sphere here the classic bouncing ball right sphere here and then let's move let's go to 20 and move it here so this this is the movement but we want it stops dead right so maybe you want it to just softly stop or you want it to go over its original pose and then slowly come back right that's the classic move and hold kind of thing as well so what we can do is literally all you do is you don't go to the end frame you may want it to be at 25 or 30 doesn't matter let's say if you want it sharper you can have at 25 30 the more the softer it is yeah so for example sake we we'll put it we'll do a key there now if we look here in the graph editor what i'll do I'll just split this like this so you can see it clearly. So if we check this out, so in the X, you can see at the end here, it's just flat. Now what you're literally doing, you can either just spline it and then you will see here, there's a bit of a cushion. 
before it stops, right? So it goes up and then back, up and then back. And then you can you can apply this to like when you're doing a jump in video games, right? You do a jump, and then you land, and then you go up. From the original idle pose, you're going your hips are going past that, and then it lands in. Okay, I'll do a jump on. A, I'll do an example of a jump, and I'll show you this principle as well. But I just wanted to break down these principles in a simple way, relating back to the bouncing ball, because in animation, everything comes back to the bouncing ball. You know, whenever you feel stuck in animation and you feel like frustrated, go back to the bouncing ball. Say to yourself, okay, what are the hips doing? Are they moving properly? Are they moving clearly? Are they following a nice arc? And I've always found that when I'm frustrated, I always go back to the fundamentals and it really clears everything up for me. Yeah, so I hope you found that video uh, useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and uh, follow and share with anyone you think who might benefit from this video. And I just want to thank you again for all your support. Uh, you guys are great. Uh, thanks for the comments as well. And I will see you in the next video. Happy animating. Have fun animating. See you later.